he could sit down with like Bill Clinton or Madeleine Albright and he had one question, what would he ask them? Pitovi, dali oni i zašto misle nešto ružno o moje zemlji, koji je to razvar, mogu da mi kažu, zašto se sve to dešava, zašto Srbi nikada nisu u pravu. Znam te kad mi smo odrasli u socijalizmu gde je bilo, kad smo ne bili mali deca, gde sve je bilo mirno, gde se zna, ne znam, fašisti su neprijatelji, mi smo dobri i onda jednom mislim se na to nešto na svijetu. The U.S. decided to destroy, with the other Western powers decided to destroy Yugoslavia in 1989, <clears throat> when it became evident that it was the one country in Eastern Europe that would not voluntarily overthrow what remained of its socialist system. Our mission is clear, to demonstrate the seriousness of NATO's purpose so that the Serbian leaders understand the imperative of reversing course, to deter an even bloodier offensive against innocent civilians in Kosovo. The dismantlement of Yugoslavia was an operation planned in Germany for a long time. I went regularly to the invitation de Franz Josef Strauss, qui était avant la ministre de la Défense, puis ensuite ministre des Finances de, de l'Allemagne. Il y avait là un représentant britannique, qui était Brian Crozier, un représentant d'Espagne, qui était un ancien ministre, qui était Sanchez Vega, un représentant du Vatican, qui était le, le Paul Violet, un, un avocat. Moi, j'étais le français, selon lesquels euh, mes voisins allemands estimaient que la, la Yougoslavie n'était pas viable et qu'il fallait se préparer, euh, au moment de la mort de Tito, à lui substituer une autre organisation territoriale. The U.S. decided to destroy, with the other Western powers decided to destroy Yugoslavia in 1989, when it became evident that it was the one country in Eastern Europe that would not voluntarily overthrow what remained of its socialist system. It was the one country that was still trying for some kind of economic independence outside of the world global free market third worldization process. They wanted a Yugoslavia whose rich natural resources would be at the disposal of multinational corporations, whose populations would work at subsistence wages, whose economy offered no competition with existing capitalist producers, only new investment opportunities. They wanted a Yugoslavia whose petroleum, engineering, mining and automotive industries would be undone and deindustrialized. And they wanted to abolish Yugoslavia's public sector services and social programs. The Serbs, who at two reprises, in 1948 and 1945, were joined to the allies against them. The second idea, of course, was to compensate the Croats and the Muslims in Bosnia, who were joined to Germany, to Wehrmacht. The third idea, from the Allemand side, was also. Il était intéressant de faire entrer la Croatie et puis la, la Slovénie dans l'orbite économique de la communauté européenne occidentale dirigée par, par l'Allemagne et d'avoir ainsi une influence économique sur la côte d'Almat et par là, si vous voulez, se rapprocher de la Méditerranée. Now, why would U.S. policymakers, you really think U.S. policymakers are motivated by some need to abolish the social programs, the public sector services, and Yugoslavia? Why would they want to do that? Do you think they are such uh, nefarious, evil, intended individuals? They would want to abolish their social programs? Come on, Parenti. Are you being paranoid? Well, why would they want to abolish our social programs? as they have been doing. Public health services, public education, environmental regulation, as inadequate at all, as all of these things have been, being cut back, cut back, cut back. Library services, oh, we used to have that service. Sorry, we don't have enough funds anymore. Not enough funds, we've got to build those missiles, you see. It's the third worldization of Yugoslavia, and it's the third worldization of the USA, and it's the third worldizations of everywhere. That's what the people in column A want. 
They want a nation that's run by about 50 multi-billionaires and the rest of us will be 260 million peasants working from hand to mouth for them. To deter an even bloodier offensive against innocent civilians in Kosovo. Strobe Talbot, Deputy Secretary of State under U.S. President Bill Clinton and the lead U.S. negotiator during the Kosovo War, said that as nations throughout the region sought to reform their economies, mitigate ethnic tensions and broaden civil society, Belgrade seemed to delight in continually moving in the opposite direction. It was Yugoslavia's resistance to the broader trends of political and economic reform, not the plight of the Kosovar Albanians, that best explains NATO's war. It was Yugoslavia's resistance to the broader trends of political and economic reform, not the plight of the Kosovar Albanians, that best explains NATO's war.